Hello everyone, welcome to our presentation. As you can see on the screen, our topic today is towards post-pandemic urban change, renaissance of bicycle networks. Populated areas in cities are nowadays being considered as one of the main uh, settings for virus transmission because of generating close human contact. Public transportation is a medium where we observe such a close contact. In order to stop spreading the virus, uh, cities must provide new regulations to reduce weightiness of public transportation and according to car dependence so that people can use alternative means of mobility. This, in this perspective, this study introduces an urban strategy that is based on creating more cyclist-oriented city where walking and cycling are the main achievements to reduce the density of public transport and car dependence. There are some cities such as Bogotá, Mexico City, Budapest, Milan and Ankara that seem successfully implementing the tactic of bicycle mobility as prioritized non-motorized mobility at an efficient level. Some of them have been turning uh, the existing roads into bike lanes and some have been designing new bike lanes. There are three urban strategies suggested in extending and improving cities' bicycle networks, which are increasing public awareness for cyclist-oriented mobility, bicycle mobility as prioritized non-motorized mobility mode, and generating an efficient and accessible bicycle plan. Successful implementation always passes through an integrated and participatory actions. Since the COVID-19 pandemic started spreading globally, many governments and municipalities prepared regulations and passed numbers of legislations to increase public awareness and encourage their citizens to use more bicycles. PN3M prioritized non-motorized mobility mode describes prioritizing cycling as a main non-motorized mobility mode in cities. Existing road and street capacity in metropolitan areas are not enough for effective cycling. Buses, subway and other public transport vehicles do not reach from one point to another at desired time and speed. Main aim here is to increase bicycle network, bicycle corridors and enable it to be used as a main mode of non-motorized mobility. Third urban strategy, which is an efficient and accessible bicycle plan, involves road and street safety agenda, determining convenient routes for bicycle lanes, and construction and implementation of bicycle lanes. Today, cities suffer from abundant, neglected, and blight spot that causes problematic spaces for inhabitants to cycle. That means people feel endangered while cycling. This action illustrates new ICT and IoT implementations to monitor and secure roads and streets by smart solutions. Implementation of new signals and CCTV cameras to monitor such blight spots supported by lighting plan could enable people to use roads and streets safely more and more commute by cycle. Cities can have different geographical and topographical conditions. Uh, determining convenient route, bike route is of vital importance because it will uh, directly affect the efficiency of its usage. So, main bike routes must be implemented along roadsides and main highways that defines city's main schema and orientation and also where geographical and topographical conditions generate their best slope. Construction and implementation of bicycle lanes will include three suggested tactics, which are turning existing car roads into bicycle lanes, marking or coloring roads, additional pop-up bike lanes. A well-developed and diffused bike network must be implemented uh, on both side of main roads, secondary roads, and connected routes to reach every part of the city. As for the second urban tactic of construction and implementation of bicycle lanes, marking or coloring the roads are suggested. This is such a practical and uh, convenient short-term urban solution that some 
European countries such as France, England, and Italy already started to implement amid COVID-19 pandemic. Additional pop-up bike lanes could also facilitate cycling during the current crisis. They also offer a, a quick, healthy, and sustainable solutions as streets can easily be adopted to accommodate movement of more and more people. Amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, it has been shown that densely populated and hyper-connected cities can amplify uh, the spread and transmission of infectious disease through increased human contact. This is what current pandemic has been forcing us recently to reconsider employing new sets of strategies towards more resilient and sustainable urban areas. The main goal here is uh, enhancing the air quality, drop on pollution levels, special sustainability, reducing overloaded capacity of hyper connected cities, liberating cities from cars to reduce traffic con congestion, and shared open networks where cities enjoy and breathe. Thank you very much for listening to our presentation.